Hello friends, welcome to the very first episode of Dungeons & Dragonfly, uh, where I adapt various characters for use in D&D. I am the Dragonfly in question, Dragonfly9078, and today we'll be building Kazuma from Konosuba. So first, a bit of background. Kazuma is your standard isekai protagonist. He was a nerdy shut-in who was hit by a truck and reincarnated to another world with a special power gifted to him by the gods. There, he has to find powerful allies and defeat the Demon King. Except he wasn't actually hit by a truck, he tried to save a classmate by jumping in front of a slow-moving tractor that he mistook for a truck due to sleep deprivation and died of a shock-induced heart attack. The special power he received is actually the goddess Aqua, who he impulsively chose out of spite after she made fun of how he died, and who was generally whiny and incompetent. And the other party members he gathers are powerful, but have their own debilitating issues as well. Kazuma ends up being sort of a generalist, picking up skills from a variety of classes to balance out his party's over-specializations, and they turn into a surprisingly effective team over the course of the series. So what do we want from this build? Well, first of all, we need some thief skills. With the rest of his party being a tank, a healer, and a mage, Kazuma picks up a number of skills from a thief friend of his, most notably his signature skill, Steel. Second, we need to be skilled in a wide range of subjects. Kazuma is the generalist of the party, so he needs to be able to fill in where the others can't. And finally, we need some magic. Cosmo's class is Adventurer, which means he can learn lower level spells from any class. Looking at ability scores, I'm using the standard point array from the player's handbook. If you're rolling for stats, make sure that Intelligence and Charisma are at least 13 for multiclassing. Strength is 10. Cosmo was a shut-in in his old life and hasn't exactly started lifting since started th starting the new one. Dexterity is next at 13. He fills the role of the thief in his party. Uh, Constitution will be 12. Cosma dies four times in the anime. He's not exactly tough to kill. Intelligence is his highest stat at 15. Uh, when he first gets to the new world, it's noted that he has high intelligence and luck with all of his other stats being average, the exact opposite of Aqua, who has incredible stats overall, but minimum luck and intelligence. Wisdom is our dump stat. Cosma does have the most common sense of the group, but he's also prone to flying off the handle or getting cocky and making things wor worse for himself when he should really just sit down and shut up. And finally, Charisma's going to be 14. He's pretty good at lying when he needs to, and people that get to know him tend to genuinely like him. Cosma is from modern day Japan, and like most people in modern day Japan, he is a human. Variant humans get plus 1 to 2 ability scores, bump dexterity to 14 and intelligence to 16. They also get a free feat. Cosmo is called out in-universe for having high luck from the get-go, so the lucky feat just makes sense. Lucky gives Cosmo three luck points per long rest that he can expend to roll a second d20 when he makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, or when an attack roll is made against him. He can then choose which of the rolls to use. That's a little bit strong. Uh, he also gets a skill proficiency, go with stealth. Fun fact, I considered using standard non-variant human for this build, but Cosmo's innate luck is something he had before he was reincarnated, so it just didn't really feel right not starting out with it. Take the folk hero background for proficiency in animal handling and survival. Being an adventurer in the Konosuba world is kind of like having folk hero as a career, and Cosmo and his crew specifically have saved the town on multiple occasions. This also gets you proficiency with land vehicles and one type of artisan's tools. I'd go with smith's tools. A, because of personal preference, and B, because Cosmo apparently actually has smithing abilities in the light novels. So when I started thinking about this build, I knew I'd be including some levels of rogue, because of Cosmo's thief skills, as I said before. But I figured that with him being a generalist, I'd have to do a, a fair bit of multiclassing. I checked the Konosuba wiki for a list of his skills and abilities to get an idea of what I needed to include, and as I looked down the list, I realized that the vast majority of what he can do is taken care of by a single class and a single subclass of that class. What I'm getting at is that Kazuma is 19 levels of Rogue. Rogues get four skills from a specific list when they start off. I will take Deception, Insight, Intimidation, and Sleight of Hand. Kazuma is a tricky dude. Deception and, and Intimidation are two of his main tactics. He's good at seeing through other people's BS, and Sleight of Hand ties into another of his main tactics. They also get Expertise in two skills at first level, and two more at sixth level, meaning Kazuma can use double his proficiency bonus for those skills. We'll be getting a couple more expertises later through feats, so for now take the same four skills we just picked up. One of the big draws of Rogue is of course Sneak Attack, which lets you add additional dice to your damage when you hit with an attack you have advantage on using a finesse weapon or a ranged weapon. Cosmo mostly uses a short sword, which is finesse, and a short bow, which is ranged, so he's set. You can only add this damage once per turn, but most rogues don't get extra attack without multiclassing, so that also isn't a problem. The damage increases with your rogue level, and as a 19th level rogue, Cosmo's sneak attack is maxed out at 10d6 additional damage. 
This lines up with a skill Kazuma picks up called Backstab, which has a chance to instantly kill an enemy in one hit if he stabs them in the back. Uh, kind of self-explanatory. Konosuba skills are kind of like that, uh, the name really tells you what they do. Another example is Auto Dodge, which gives a chance to dodge any attack based on the user's luck stat. Obviously, our lucky feat sort of reflects this, but we can go further with the features Uncanny Dodge from level 5, Evasion at level 7, and Elusive at level 18. Uncanny Dodge lets you cut the damage you take from an attack that hits you in half as a reaction, as long as you can see the attacker. Evasion lets you take no damage on a successful dexterity save and half damage on a fail, if you would normally take half damage on a success and full damage if you fail. And Elusive just straight up says that attacks can't have advantage on you unless you're incapacitated. High level abilities are good, guys. Kazuma also has a skill called Enemy Detection that, surprise surprise, detects enemies near him, which I'm comfortable equating to Blind Sense, which rogues get at level 14 and which lets them know the location of hidden or invisible creatures within 10 feet of them, provided that they can hear. As for features that don't directly map to Kazuma's abilities, there's Slippery Mind at level 15, which gives him proficiency with wisdom saves, Reliable Talent at level 11, which makes it so he can't roll lower than a 10 on ability checks he's proficient with, and Cunning Action from level 2, which lets him dash, disengage, hide, or aim as a bonus action. Aim is a useful addition from Unearthed Arcana that gives you advantage on the next attack roll during the current turn, but requires that you not move during that turn before or after you take aim. It's great for sneak attacking with ranged weapons, so actually let's call that his snipe skill. Now, a lot of Cosmo's skills are actually magical, so for a rogue archetype at level 3, we'll take Arcane Trickster. Arcane Tricksters learn spells from the wizard list, with the restriction that most of them have to be from the enchantment or illusion schools. We'll get into all his spells a bit later, but the main one they get is Mage Hand, a cantrip that conjures a spectral floating hand that you can use for minor telekinesis for a minute. Normally, you can move the hand 30 feet and use it to manipulate things as an action, but Arcane Tricksters get Mage Hand Ledger Domain, which lets them direct it with the bonus action from their cunning action. Furthermore, they can make the hand invisible and use it for basically anything you can make a sleight of hand check for, hence the name. This is Cosmo's Steal skill, which lets him pick pockets and steal objects from a distance. I was a little concerned because Mage Hand can only lift 10 pounds, but the heaviest object Cosmo has actually stolen with this is Mitsurugi's Cursed Greatsword, Gram. The weapons table in the player's handbook lists the weight of a greatsword as 6 pounds, so it's well within Mage Hand's capabilities. Arcane Tricksters also get Magical Ambush at 9th level, giving other creatures disadvantage on saves against their spells if they were hidden from those creatures when they cast a spell on them, and Versatile Trickster, letting them get advantage on an attack against a creature within 5 feet of their Mage Hand. It says the Mage Hand distracts them, and Cosmos Steel can be very distracting. The capstone of Arcane Trickster is Spell Thief at level 17. Once per day, when a creature casts a spell that targets Cosma, he can use his reaction to force that creature to make a save using its spellcasting ability. If they fail the save, the spell is negated, and if it's a 1st to 4th level spell, Cosma can cast it using his own spell slots for the next 8 hours, during which time that creature can't cast it. This doesn't mirror any of his skills specifically, but more so reminds me of how he learns his skills in the first place, by seeing other people use them, usually on him. Rogues get 6 ability score improvements as they level up, the last of which comes in at level 19. Hey, what a coincidence! Uh, most of those are going to be feats to fill out more of Cosmos' skills, though. Observant gives plus 1 to intelligence, plus 5 to passive perception and investigation, and lets Cosmo read lips, which he can apparently do. I should probably read the light novels, they're probably pretty good. Sharpshooter lets you ignore half and three quarters cover with ranged weapon attacks, lets you attack at long range without disadvantage, and also lets you take a minus five to your attacks with a ranged weapon for plus 10 damage if you hit. Combine this with aim for advantage and your short bow is dealing 11d6 plus 10 damage at 320 feet. That's a pretty nice snipe if you ask me. Prodigy from Xanathar's Guide to Everything gives you one skill proficiency, one tool proficiency, one language, and one expertise. Take Perception for the skill, Chef's Utensils for the tool, Stealth for the expertise to get your Lurk going, and for the language, I don't know, maybe Aqua taught you some swears in Celestial. Perceptive is from the Feats for Skills Unearthed Arcana. It gives plus one to Wisdom, Proficiency in Perception, and lets you ignore disadvantage on Perception checks from being in a lightly obscured area. If you already have Proficiency in Perception, which we got from Prodigy, you actually get Expertise in Perception instead. Our last feat is Human Determination from the Feats for Races on Earth Arcana. It gives plus one to any ability score, I would round Intelligence up to 18, and lets you gain advantage on any ab attack roll, ability check, or saving throw once per long rest for just a little bit more luck. 
After all of that, we still have one more ability score improvement to deal with. Personally, I'd bump Dexterity up to 16 for better attacks, AC, and stealing, but if you'd prefer to max out Intelligence for better spellcasting, that's fine too. Our capstone and only level of multiclassing is the first level of Sorcerer. Sorcerers get a handful of spells to fill out some of Cosmo's more magical skills, and Divine Soul Sorcerers get to add 2d4 to a missed attack roll or a failed saving throw once per short or long rest. Cosmo has not one but two goddesses rooting for him, even if one forgets she's a goddess sometimes. Taking a look at spell casting, most of our levels are in Arcane Trickster, meaning that all told we have the spell slots of a 7th level caster. We also have two different spell casting abilities, and neither one is maxed out. We get eight cantrips between our two classes. One has to be Mage Hand, of course, so for the other Arcane Trickster cantrips, take Firebolt, Ray of Frost, and Prestidigitation. Firebolt and Ray of Frost are both damaging cantrips, so we want to use the higher spellcasting ability to hit more often, and Prestidigitation lets us do a bunch of minor effects, like lighting campfires, cleaning things, warming food, etc. It's, it's really, really versatile. Kazuma also knows a bunch of minor elemental skills, so for our Sorcerer cantrips, we'll take Mold Earth, Shape Water, Gust, and Control Flames. Divine Soul Sorcerers get a specific spell based on the alignment of their Divine Power. I'd say Aqua broadly qualifies as good, so take Cure Wounds. They also get a couple of first level spells, go with Expeditious Retreat to make a quick getaway, and Feather Fall so you don't break your neck. Again. Arcane Trickster spells have to all be enchantments or illusions except for three. Uh, those three for Cosmo will be Snare to tie people up, Dark Vision to give someone Dark Vision for eight hours, and Vampiric Touch, a third level spell that lasts for up to a minute depending on concentration, and lets you deal 3d6 necrotic damage with a melee spell attack, healing you for half the damage that was dealt. Most of the enchantments and illusions aren't super remarkable, but we will take Color Spray to blind enemies, Sleep to put them to sleep, and both regular and greater invisibility for a bit more stealth than our Lurk skill. Now that the build is complete, the question becomes, how viable is it? Well, you have eight skill proficiencies, six of which have expertise and reliable talent, meaning that the minimum you can roll on, I don't know, say, a perception check to see that a tractor isn't a truck, is a 21. You learned your lesson, you aren't falling for that again. You have consistent damage from a long range with your short bow, dealing 11d6 plus 13 with sneak attack and sharpshooter, varied damage with firebolt and ray of frost, and if you're within 30 feet of an enemy, you can steal weapons or whatever else you want, since your minimum sleight of hand check is 25. You also have a variety of magic, and illusions and enchantments in particular have high potential depending on your imagination. And between lucky, human determination, favored by the gods, and slippery mind, you have a very good chance of passing any save that comes your way. On the other hand, you kind of need to keep people at a distance because leather armor doesn't exactly lend itself to high AC. Your AC is only 15, and you've got just over 100 hit points, so a few good hits and you're done. You also have a very limited spell selection, with the spell slots of a 7th level character, none of which are higher than 4th level, and neither of your two spellcasting modifiers are maxed out. And finally, luck just runs out. You can use luck points to ward off attacks, which is very good with your low AC and HP, but once they're gone, you could be in some very real trouble. But that's what you have friends for, to serve as toad bait while you shoot from a distance. You're the plan guys, so make a plan that keeps you out of danger and leaves you all filthy rich. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions of characters to build, please leave them in the comments below. I do have a backlog of characters to get through, but I don't have a specific order to them, so if I get an interesting suggestion, there's no reason I couldn't do it sooner. Thank you for watching, friends, and I will see you all later.